What's good everyone, my name is Mateo Toro. I'm a run and gun filmmaker based in Reading, Pennsylvania. And today I'm very excited because in this video I'm gonna be giving you my director's commentary, how I produced, shot, edited, color graded, and delivered this final video to this organization. These days, content creators, we wear so many hats. So I figured, let me show you the process of how I even deliver this final project from beginning to end. Before I do a scene by scene breakdown, let me talk about gear really quickly. So I filmed all the videos with a Sony Alpha A7S III. I can't talk highly enough about this camera. Watch my review up above. Uh, it's just an amazing camera. The dynamic range, it really transformed the way that I was able to do these videos. The lenses that I used was a 24 to 70 G Master. Having a zoom lens for these kind of running gun shoots was so, so imperative and I'm glad I rented one. I ended up buying one halfway through filming the five shoots because I've realized I needed a zoom lens in my life. I also rented a 35 millimeter 1.4 Zeiss Sony lens. I just wanted something that was a little bit more of a prime Still was 35 millimeter because it was my favorite focal length. I didn't own one at the time because I'm waiting for the G Master to finally ship. And lastly, I always use my handy dandy $40 vintage Helios 44 8, uh, 58 millimeter lens. I, I don't even know what it's called, but $40 vintage lens that I use all the time for most of the detail shots. And for audio, I use the Audio Technica ATA035 that my friend Jay from Pagoda City Records let me borrow. It's a boom. Uh, a condenser mic it's so amazing it, it's so clear i hope you can hear it from just this video alone and then i also use the h6 pro um from zoom to to use phantom power to record using that mic okay everyone let's get started into the cinematography breakdown so first things first let me just say that this is actually the first project i fully completed within davinci resolve 16. i'm primarily a final Cut pro x user but i'm really trying to transition and make davinci resolve my my primary NLE. I just feel like it has so many amazing features and functions. You don't need plugins and it obviously it's known for its color grading tools. So yeah, I was really proud of how this came out and the fact that this is the first project I fully completed within DaVinci Resolve. So as you can see, it's a very simple edit, but I did everything in here, the sound design, the color grade and the entire edit. So when we go into the color grade panel, you can see my light box, all of the favorite frames of all the scenes. I'm gonna break down my favorite scenes, not all of them obviously for the entire video because that would be too long, and just show you my thought process, how I shot them, and why I feel like they really helped sell the story. So let's get into the this sequence right here, which is showing Brian in his bedroom, getting dressed, putting on the jersey that he's gonna hand cycle in. Why I thought this scene was very important and the reason that I even did uh, include that in the video treatment is the fact that Brian in our conversation was telling me he wants to show people that he's able to complete normal things that everyone else does. It's just the fact that he has, he's paraplegic and he's on a wheelchair. However, that doesn't mean he can't get dressed, that he can't do the simple things that people think that these people can't do just because that they're, they have some sort of disability. So he really wanted to drive that home. And so we, you know, we wanted to make a very simple scene stand out. We went wide, 24 millimeter. Everything was shot on the A7S III. Like I said, everything was shot on S-Log III. And we just used a natural light that was available to us. And then right here off to the corner, I used a bounce board just to fill in a little bit of light onto the right side of his body. And, you know, I really love how this came out. I think it was the only scene that we shot on a tripod just to give it that stillness and allow to, the focus to be on Brian's movements, which is getting off the bed, opening the drawer and pulling out the jersey, as you can see right here. Um, and I love how this shot came out. I shot this on 35 millimeter 1.4 Sony lens. Um, and we just allowed Brian to really be in his zone, be in the element that he is. He loves to hand cycle. And and then we wanted to get a close up. And on this close up, I actually used my $40 <laughs> vintage lens, the Helios lens, my handy dandy Helios lens. I love that lens. And I just wanted a really strong close up. I was studying a lot of other videos that they've done for Paralympics or Paralympians. Um, on a high level production value and it's always the details that really stand out so i knew i wanted to get this detail shot of brian's hand zipping up the jersey him getting into battle mode as you will say <laughs> to go out and hand cycle and then the next sequence uh it's the gym sequence you know it's showing brian and his element that he is a fucking badass that he can really work his ass off just because he can't move his legs doesn't mean he, can tra he can't train hard and that he's not training hard as is. Um, so some of my favorite scenes, again, here, as you can see, is the leg shot. I wanted to show the legs. I thought I was going to show it in the bedroom or in his house, but I ended up showing it in the gym. So it just 
always have that reference ready. You never know where you're gonna film it or just film as many times as you can, trying to get different angles or different variations of the shot that you really have in mind for the final edit. Here, I happened to do it in the gym and I just thought it made sense given that it was such a high intense um, scene, Brian working out, really going ham. Um, as you can see, like he's just a beast. Like this dude is jacked. Uh, he can work out harder than probably most people that I know. And, you know, we really wanted to showcase that with some high intense, um, high intense workout with his trainer, Ricky, who introduced him to hand cycling. So this is the transition phase, you know, it's him working out, showing that he's, he's training really hard to become a Paralympian, showing the intensity of the workout, and then just, you know, allowing him to be in his element. I just really was a fly on the wall, documenting as is, and then just trying to put it all together in the final edit. Uh, I really love this, uh, you know, silhouette scene right here where Vicky is handing him the dumbbells. And then I got this like low angle, just trying to get a variation, whether it was a silhouette, whether it was from a high angle or, or, or eye level, as you can see right here, I got on the floor <laughs> and I was just really trying to just sell that intensity. It's a workout, you know, you don't want it to be boring. And that was my intention with that. And then as we move on right here, uh, these are some of my favorite scenes. It was the next sequence, which is Brian in his house hand cycling on the kicker And I just thought that they came out so amazing. Um, I just put on a dream filter by prism lens effects I really wanted to bloom the highlights and just create this dreamy look and allow us to just Be present in, in Brian's world Which is this is the majority of the time that he spends hand cycling is on the kicker training inside his house because we filmed this still during winter um, so it was cold out and we just wanted to sell that. I love this shot right here. I just use his hand and his shoulder to frame him up as a close up. This was all in 35 millimeter Sony lens. Um, just my favorite focal length. And again, Brian on the kicker, but this is the transition scene to the to the climax, which is obviously him hand cycling and just showing him out. Uh, look, th look at this dude, he's jacked. Like he, he was putting in the work. He is making his dream come true. He was oppressed for so many years. He didn't want to move. so. I just knew somewhere in the edit, I wanted this scene to transition into the hand cycling scene because you have him working out hard as is in his house. And then, you know, the beauty shots, if you will, or more of the establisher shots would be near the lake. Um, this scene right here, wow, I was just blown away that we got blessed by the film gods with such an amazing golden hour. Um, we had planned to come here for golden hour. Um, it was like the first full teaser spring day. So we had a great 50 degree ish weather. And the gut and the sun was just just blessing us. Um, I I walked down this hill over here and I just saw this framing and I knew I wanted to go wide and show Brian right here uh, with scale of like the size of this tree and the size of the lake and just showing him again in the element. I just thought that these shots uh, really allowed us to enter his dream world, um, which is to be a Paralympic hand cyclist. That's why I put the dream filter also to bloom the highlights, give it this effect that. It just uh, transitioned us into his world. Another scene right here, and Brian just strolling down. I was just trying to get creative with the different angles and variations. Here's another one, just, I really love framing this one wide, 24 millimeter, the sun was starting to go down. I love the usage right here that I did with the sign one way, like just showing that he's moving forward no matter what, kind of like Aaron Yeager. <laughs> My AOT fans will know who that is. <laughs> and then obviously the money shot, you know, we all need that in our edit somewhere to inspire us, to, to allow us to have a, a final clip that's gonna just close off the video. And this scene came out naturally. It was all handheld. Everything in this video is handheld except for the scene um, in Brian's bedroom. And the way that the way that I saw this shot was, it was a spur of the moment mo uh, scene. Brian was actually laughing at someone else who was passing by on the bike. And he, I saw him smiling and I realized like, oh no, I want this guy to be smiling at the end. Like this is gonna be the way how it end this video is him strolling by, the sun's blasting him in golden hour. Like look at this amazing scenery right here. And him just showing gratitude with just a smile. And so I was like, hey bro, like just roll back a little bit over here and let me get you uh, strolling into the frame and um, just smiling. I just wanna show off that, that you are in your zone and your zone is you happy doing what you love being the fact that you can be an athlete again and that's kind of the last line in the video as well so i just thought that it was a great way to end the video i saw it there and then and i knew this was going to be the last shot this film is 120 frames per second s log three uh 
it just came out amazing. Let me talk about the color grade really quickly. I didn't have a lot of time to actually make <laughs> a full on color grade um, from scratch. I knew I had these five videos. I had such a short timeline within each video. So I decided to actually use a LUT. And instead of like randomly buying some LUT that probably wouldn't work with my camera, I looked into DaVinci Resolve and I really fell in love with this Rec. 709 Kodak 2383D60. Uh, it's built in, it came for free, so I, that was really cool. And then I worked backwards. I made that my final node, my first node. I started working on my temperature and my tint, trying to get those um, skin tones to start to look correct. Then I started working on my tone a little bit, so just really trying to make the shadows pop, make the contrast be a certain way. And the next few nodes, I started working on the saturation. I really tried to dial in um, everything that I could to just balance everything. And then on my seventh node right here, as you can see, is where I did the, the tone on the individual colors. So my R, my G, my B, you know, just playing around. I'm not a professional colorist. And then final note is where I just dialed in the hues, uh, dialed in my saturation to the best of my ability and just try to balance the, the skin tones. Believe it or not, I did. I barely ever looked at my scopes. I just really went off the feel. I went up how it was looking on my screen and just trusted my instinct. Um, Yes, I could have looked at nodes and made sure that this was on one, this was on 100, but I just felt like it was coming out really naturally and I just kept going with it. Um, as you can see right here, the Luma Resaturation, don't sleep on this um, tool right here. It's what really makes everything pop at the end. Uh, I just really love using that at the end. So. so even though these are short videos, you still want to have a beginning, climax, and end. You want to present people who these characters are, what struggles they were going through. You want to tell in the middle you know, what they were overcoming, how they overcame it. And at the end, you want to tell people either their goals or aspirations or what they want to share with the world at the end. So with Brian's story, it was just really, really inspirational. He was shot, immediately was paralyzed. He became a paraplegic. And for over six years, he was kind of depressed. He really wasn't working out as he used to because he was an athlete all his life up until the moment he was injured. And then one of his physical trainers introduced him to hand cycling and that's how he got involved. He started getting active again. His life started transforming. He really, really was starting to make changes in his life. And then he found out about I'm Able Foundation, which is the organization that reached out to me for this video. That's how they connected. They provided him the grant. That's what I needed to really, really, really you know, show the world is like our Army Foundation provided him the hand cycle. And then at the end, obviously, we tell the story that he overcame everything. He's in a great, great place in his life. And he wants to become a Paralympian hand cyclist. So I think this was an amazing story. I had only a minute and a half, two minutes to tell it. And again, I have very little limited time because of the timeline. I have to go knock out all these other videos. So Pre-production is very important. You wanna really understand the scope before you go into pre-production, know the stories that you need to tell, what angle you need to tell the stories with. So with these fundraising highlight videos, I knew at the end of the day, kind of the end was gonna be very similar, which is these grant recipients thanking the organization for the work that they've done to provide them either a adaptive hand cycle or these type of adaptive wheelchairs. So in conclusion, let's talk about the delivery of these videos. So I delivered all five videos on time. The last video I delivered it while I was in my layover in North Carolina, 30 minutes before the I'm Able Bash. I'm Able Foundation, they showed all these five videos during the virtual bash and they were able to raise $60,000 during an hour and a half for their virtual batch, which was amazing. So I'm glad I was able to be part of that. I'm glad my videos were able to help them tell these amazing stories. And of course, if you're a nonprofit and you wanna reach more people, think about how you can use videos in a very different way than you've maybe been traditionally thinking. The 30 second commercial, the 60 second commercial, that doesn't work anymore in this day and age. You need to be putting out content, you need to be sharing stories more consistently and more creatively. And just think of it, as a way where you can reach people all over the world and not just a you know, local radius based on an event. And again, I hope this video was valuable to you as a running gun filmmaker. Hopefully I was able to show you something that maybe you haven't thought of before or help you in your next video shoot. And thank you for watching. I can't say anything else. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video, it really helps out the channel. And I'll see everyone in the next video. Peace.